Hello, I'd like to talk about the Victorinox Swiss Champ. Now, before I begin, I will say this is probably going to be a lengthy video simply because this model has so many tools and functions, so I'll take a while to cover it. So I'll start off by giving some technical details about the knife, I'll run through the tools, and I'll give you my opinion on this model. So this is a 91mm in length Swiss Army knife. It's an 8 layer model, 8 layer meaning, you know, the thickness, how many two layers there is. And it has pff, over 30 functions anyway. I can't quite remember off the top of my head and I really don't feel like sitting counting. So, let's have a look. Oh, actually, I should tell you the price. Um, when, when I got this, it was about 45 to 50 pounds. You can still find it for that price, it, although it does depend on where you get it. This was bought on Amazon, um, but it also depends on the scales. So if you want just a normal, you know, the, the red scales, you're probably looking at about £45. If you want the jelly scales, you know, blue jelly or something, you're probably looking at about £60. And they also offer um, this model in wood. I, I think it's walnut. If you want it in walnut or I think it also uh, babinga, if I'm pronouncing that right, one of the, the wood models is about a hundred pounds so the, the only difference between you know this model and the wood model is the fact that the scales are made of wood although you are kind of losing some tools obviously the wood is going to look far nicer because wood is a naturally beautiful material although you do lose some scale tools but we'll, we'll get to the scale tools later on in the video so I'm just going to run through the tools, although I will say beforehand, the blade is about two and a half inches. Obviously, this is legal to carry in the UK. All that's out of the way, let's have a look at the tools. So obviously, most importantly, we have a knife blade. As I said, about two and a half inches, so legal to carry. Obviously, it's a spear point blade and it's flat ground and... The steel is actually pretty easy to sharpen, which is, of course, is a good thing. I usually just use a ceramic rod uh, by Victorinox to sharpen this. Of course, you could do it on a stone, and as I've said before, I'd avoid pull-through sharpeners because they're crap and they'll damage your blade. Same again, we've got a small pen blade. This is about an inch and a half, or an inch, I'm not quite sure. Now, while I'm on the blades actually, I'd like to say, I find that the big blade, the large blade, is good for cutting fruit and possibly whittling, whereas the smaller blade is good for opening packages and also whittling and doing those sort of finer jobs. Beside the blade, we have a metal slash wood file, whatever you want to use that for. Um, it is quite a, you know, obviously a, a small file, but you can actually find a lot of uses for these from just, you know, filing small bits of metal, um, small bits of wood. And uh, on the underside here, if my camera will focus, there we go, we also have a hacksaw. So you're not going to cut, you know, big chunks of steel with that, obviously, but, you know, you do have a, a small hacksaw on here, which is definitely a good thing. And, of course, being a file, one of the uses for this is, you know, to file your nails, and you could also use the end of it as a nail pick. Beside the file, we have, if I get a hold of it, a wood saw. Pretty self-explanatory, I saw, for cutting wood. Now, again, you're not going to, you know, cut down trees with this. You're not going to cut big boards of wood with it. It's for cutting small, you know, branches of trees or bushcraft or that sort of thing. A saw like this, you should only really cut the thickness of your, th you know, a piece of wood this is thickness of, the thickness of your thumb, sorry. This saw is obviously, you know, just, just about the same size as the knife, which is about two and a half inches. Um, I will say that the saws on these Swiss Army knives are actually very good for striking a, ferris, a ferrocerium or fire steel or whatever you want to call it. Although I would say 
put your finger, your, your thumb here, sort of pressing against it, against the, the saw, so you don't close it on your hand. That's obviously going to be painful. Um, do that at your own risk. I'm not responsible if you hurt yourself. This is just what I do. And we have a fish scaler here, which also has a ruler both imperial and metric. Now, believe it or not, the this ruler is actually pretty useful. What I find myself doing with this ruler is measuring other knives. So I, I use in the UK you can carry a knife up to three inches long, as long as it's a folding knife and non-locking. Well, this ruler is about three inches. So that's handy. I use this for measuring the blade length of other knives to see if I could legally carry them. Next we have a pair of scissors. Again, as I've said before, scissors are one of my favourite tools on any pocket knife or multi tool. And I don't really think you could beat Victorinox when it comes to scissors. They are, in my view, the best. They're reasonably sharp, simple, easy to use, and they're not painful to use like some motor tools. I'm looking at Gerber um, in that regard. And they're fairly easy to sharpen as well. Um, scissors are one of those tools that you should sharpen, obviously being a blade. And you do so the exact same way as you would sharpen a knife. The only problem with the Victorinox scissors is these springs are... I've heard that they're easy to break, although I've never actually broken them. Um, they do also get weak over time, and sometimes the... I'll just demonstrate, it's easier to demonstrate. Sometimes this happens, which isn't fun. And if you close the tool while it is in this state, you risk damaging the spring. I've done that a few times, although thankfully I've never had to replace it. Thankfully you do get replacements of these springs, although I think it's difficult to refit them. I'll also say that the pivot is, well, it's, it's riveted, it's not a screw. I think it would be better if it was a screw, but there you have it. Pair of pliers. Yeah, we've got a, a tiny pair of pliers. Um, honestly, I haven't found much use for these, although two uses I have found for these is picking up very small screws for other knives. And I also find it useful uh, for feeding my snake, just by, you know, I use these pliers to dangle the mouse in front of my snake, so there's that. And my battery is going low. We also have a Phillips screwdriver, which stops at this angle. And of course, in line. I quite like these screwdrivers again. Um, these are 3D screwdrivers, unlike some multi tools. In fact, even even this model has a Phillips screwdriver that is flat. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But these are pretty good screwdrivers on these Victorinox knives. And sharing a spring with the screwdriver is a magnifying glass. Once again, I've not really got very much use for the magnifying glass, but I think it's pretty cool to have have it on there and especially for you know survival you could potentially use that to start a fire so that's a good thing and um, fun fact actually i think the swiss champ and the explorer are two of the only currently produced models by victorinox that actually have a magnifying glass that said, actually, the Evolution series, which is actually a Wenger, a Wenger design, sorry, also have them, so I don't really know if that counts or not. And lastly, we have a bottle opener with a wire bender and a screwdriver. Again, stops at the 45 degrees and, of course, in line, and it also makes a good pry bar for opening paint tins or tins of wax or the likes. And we have a can opener, which in my opinion, these are one of the best can openers in the world. I simply refuse to use a dedicated can opener because I like to use them on the Swiss Army knives. 
And this is what I'm talking about. This is a Phillips screwdriver, although obviously it's flat, but it is intended as a Phillips. And it even says so in the instruction book, in the little instruction leaflet that comes with the tool. Now, another thing that I only uh, found out a few months ago, this portion here is actually also designed to be used as an orange peeler, and I will say it works very well as an orange peeler. Not many people know that, but that is indeed also an orange peeler. Now, we'll go to the back of the, the model. We have a corkscrew. I don't think many people actually use corkscrews nowadays, but it's only to have it, I suppose. Although some people claim to use this to untie knots, and yeah, I've, I've tried it and it works. Um, although I usually use a bridle um, whenever I don't have a proper um, marlin spike to hand. And inside the corkscrew we have a small eyeglass screwdriver. If the camera will focus. Doesn't want to. And beside that we have a wood chisel, which is a rather odd feature for a pocket knife. The Swiss Champ is one of the very few knives out there that has a chisel. I'm not really sure what to do with that. I've never really used it, and I don't really know what you would do with it because it's so tiny. And especially since it's, you know, since, since you would have to use it in this sort of grip so I don't, don't really know what you could do with that although I think it's also intended as a scraper it did come sharp but it's kind of blunt now um, I would imagine you would sh you would sharpen this the exact same as any woodworking chisel and then beside the chisel we have another screwdriver so there's plenty of screwdrivers on this tool which of course is a good thing and a rather controversial tool is the multi-purpose hook. I personally like it, some people don't. Um, as I said in a previous video, wherever you see scissors, you're most likely going to see this hook. Although, one use I personally found for this is to cock the string on a crossbow. So if you get a pair of Swiss Army knives with the hook, it makes cocking the string on a crossbow a lot easier and it saves you from buying a cocking aid if you, still ha if you have a few Swiss Army knives lying around. And of course it doubles as a stand on the Swiss Champ, because it's such a thick knife. And uh, lastly, on the back layer, we have an, an awl, which again, is one of my favorite tools, with the eyeglass, sorry, with a, with a sewing eye. Now, this is actually the plus scale model, which means, um, along with the toothpick and tweezers, it also has a pen, so we'll go through the toothpick and tweezers first. So, nearly every single Swiss Army knife comes standard with a toothpick. Very self-explanatory, of course. And a set of tweezers, which are, of course, very handy. But because it's the plus scale model, we also have a ballpoint pen, which is rather useful. Not that I've ever really used it. I don't really do much writing at all. And there is one other tool on this, although it's not present on mine, which is um, just a pin, Sim simply a pin, which usually is seated, maybe a bit too dark to see, unfortunately, in, if you can see that little hole right in there. Some people say it's good for, you know, using as a pick or um, bursting a, a blister. I've misplaced mine. Now... Me being a clown, I put this in the dishwasher to clean it, and uh, of course it worked, but it warped the scales. So, don't put your Swiss Army knife in the dishwasher, because the heat will warp your scales. I actually did it with a smaller knife, which I bought second hand, and it worked absolutely fine. For some reason, the dishwasher didn't like the Swiss Champ, which really does suck, because actually this was a, was a gift when I was 17, so... A bit disappointed about that. But, all in all... Um, this is probably one of my favourite Swiss Army knives. Now, of course, it's a pretty bulky knife. So it's not very pocket friendly. Um, I do occasionally 
EDC it in my pocket, in my front jeans pocket. Um, yeah, it's, it, it does weigh down your trousers, you do feel it. It's not so bad if you're wearing a belt, of course. But um, it's it can be a bit of a nuisance to carry. This one is possibly more suited for carrying in a bag. In a rucksack or something. Unless, of course, you wish to get the belt pouch, which I actually happen to have. I have the leather um, belt pouch right here, which... When you first get these, they're actually really very nice, although because I've obviously had some use on this, it's a bit, you know, scratched up. But these are absolutely gorgeous when you first get them. They cost, I think they're somewhere in between £8 and £15, although I cannot remember off the top of my head. Of course, it's got a, you know, a rather thick belt loop there. Um. So, yeah, this is good for almost anything. This will cover most small tasks. Anything from, you know, camping, hunting, bushcraft, survival, EDC, walking, cycling, all that good stuff. This has tools for almost all of those things. And of course, having a wood saw and magnifying glass and a fish scaler, it does very much lend itself to the outdoors. So that pretty much concludes my video. Um, I definitely recommend these. In fact, one more thing before I leave. I like to compare it to a few other common Swiss Army knives. So as I said, the Swiss Champ is an 8 layer. That's compared to a 5 layer, which is the Huntsman. Some people think even the Huntsman isn't very EDC friendly due to its size. It's obviously, it's more EDC friendly than the Swiss Champ. I mean, it's about half the thickness. And of course, we've got the Spartan, which is one of the smallest uh, Swiss Army knives. Or one of the smallest 91mm uh, knives in terms of thickness. has only got the two layers. Of course, all these are fantastic knives. Um, but the, the, the Swiss Champ is definitely one of the thickest. Although, there are some... Knives a lot thicker than the Swiss Champ. I think it's. Well, I don't actually remember the model, but there are actually some models that's almost twice as thick as the Swiss Champ, and those are bloody expensive. So anyway, that concludes my video of the the Torinox Swiss Champ. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed or found it interesting or useful, please consider giving me a like, a comment, and subscribe. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.